single variable optimization. We'll cover some mathematical preliminaries, and this is actually minimums and maximums of functions and how the first and second order derivatives relate to that. We'll then get into single variable optimization. Based on everything we've covered in the course so far, we'll be able to cover parabolic interpolation and Newton's method very quickly. And we'll conclude this by talking about the golden section search. Mathematical preliminaries. So we have the first derivative test. So let's say we have some function f of x. At its extremum, in this case, the maximum, extremum sort of the generic term for minimum or maximum, but at the extremum, the slope is zero. So by figuring out where the first derivative equals zero, we can locate a maximum. And likewise, if the function has a minimum, still at the minimum, at the extremum, the first derivative goes to zero. Now, of course, when the function's increasing, our slope is positive. When it's decreasing, our slope is negative. So the first derivative test can locate extremums but it can't be used too easily to figure out whether that's a minimum or a maximum. That's where the second derivative test comes in. If the second derivative is greater than zero, then the curvature is this. It's, it has the, uh, it's a maximum that we're looking at. I don't know how to word the curvature, uh, an upward curvature, I don't know. But so if the second derivative is positive, we're looking at a maximum. If the second derivative is negative, we're looking at a minimum. So the second derivative is really characterizing curvature. Parabolic interpolation. This method is simple. We have some function and we know generally maybe where the extremum is. So what we'll do is we will fit a polynomial to that, hopefully spanning that, that extremum, and then use the first derivative test on that polynomial to find the extremum. So step one, we pick three points that hopefully span the extremum or they at least characterize the shape of the curve enough that our polynomial will find the extremum to our desired degree of accuracy. But let's say they span the extremum. Then we'll fit the points to the polynomial and we'll calculate those polynomial coefficients, a naught, a one, and a two. Now, given that we have a polynomial, we will calculate its first derivative. So our polynomial is a naught plus a1 times x plus a2 times x squared. If we calculate the derivative of this, here's our first derivative. So we set that equal to zero. And that's when we set it equal to zero, we're finding x extremum where the extrema is. Now we can solve for e. So we see that the extrema x sub e is minus a1 over 2a2. And so we've calculated our polynomial coefficients up here. So that tells us immediately where the extrema is. And if we do this all algebraically, we can get this big ugly equation here for just jumping immediately to that extrema. I tend to just stick with the matrix approach and never use this big ugly equation, but there it is. And you'll see that in the textbook and on the internet. That's the polynomial method. So, Here's a visualization of how this is working. Let's just say our true function is in the blue line. And so we have a true extremum here. Then we pick our three points that are spanning this extremum. We're showing these with these blue dots. If we fit those blue dots to a polynomial, in fact, this is the polynomial that we're getting. And so if we find the extrema of this polynomial, we end up here. And so there's an error there. So the difference between those two, really the span in X is our error. So this is not exact. And the closer we can get those three points to the true extremum, the more accurate this will be. The more the true function looks like a second order polynomial, also the more accurate that will be. Newton's method. When we were talking about root finding, we covered the Newton-Raphson method. And so we started with some initial guess, x sub i, and we iterated the function divided by its derivative. We kept subtracting that each time, and we iterated and we found a root. A root is where that function equals zero. So if Newton's method is a twist on this, 
to find extrema. So we're going to calculate an auxiliary function, call it g of x, which is the derivative of f. Remember from the first derivative test, what happens at an extrema? The first derivative goes to zero. So we are actually now, by using a root finding algorithm on the first derivative of a function, we're finding an extrema with a root finding algorithm. And so that's how the Newton's method works. So writing this in terms of our auxiliary function g, we're going to do root finding using the newton raphson method on g. So that's how this would work. But now if we replace g with the derivative of f, we get an update equation that looks like this, where we're taking the first derivative and divided by the second derivative. And if we're iterating this, now we're finding an extrema, a minimum or a maximum instead of a root. But our code for root finding is almost exactly the same, just modified slightly. Now we're finding extrema. From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for watching this video. I love hearing your stories about how these videos helped you. I also love answering your questions. So please tell me your stories and ask your questions in the comment section. I promise I will try to answer every single question that's asked. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button. I also recommend visiting the official course website that has links to the latest versions of the notes, the latest videos, and there's lots of other resources to help you learn, including implementations in MATLAB. I'll see you in the next video.